both of us. Now, we're going to hear a lot more from Scott as we go on. Um, but this week's topic is there's only one Ricky Hatton, uh, a chant that we've heard reverberating around arenas for a long time now. And we will hear it again, I imagine, this Saturday as he takes on an exhibition fight with another legend in Marco Antonio Barrera. Um, and that's at the end of a boxer show um, that precedes it. Are they which putting is, him at the end? Well, I think it's the boxer show first, yeah. then the Hatton show afterwards. I think that's kind of how it's set up. Even though it's in the same arena on the same night. Interesting. And Sky will be showing it as well, yeah. of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, I guess, first of all, tell us, Scott, what Ricky Hatton's meant to you throughout your life because you grew up kind of looking up to him. Yeah, I mean, obviously, when, when I was growing up, Ricky Hatton was one of the fighters I looked up to, the amount of fights that I went and watched him. Um, and, and and when you've got the someone who you, you look up to, you think, I want to be like him one day. So it, it gives you that as, as, you know, as a kid growing up. Um, and, and I remember, like I said, I remember going to the arena many times, watching him uh, when he was there, when he uh, beat Costa Zoo in the atmosphere. And that's what, th they was the sort of nights, obviously, when you wear the atmosphere and you see, wow, I want some of this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and even at that time when, obviously, I wanted to, you know, be a world champion and wanted to be a boxer and, and all that, it was still a, a far, far... Um, it was just a vision more than anything mm. on what you're saying. So it's still a long way. So I'd not even start, I'd not even put a pair of boxing gloves on then for boxing. Uh, I was still I was tie boxing at the time. Mm. Um, but them, them are the sort of nights that John... Like, say, when he fought Costa Zoo, the atmosphere, they, that's what... give me the buzz about boxing. You know, obviously, when I was going, when I was younger, you'd watch Nazim on um, Tyson and all them. You know, my mum and dad would let me stay up and watch them late at night, um, early hours in the morning. So, so, but it was really, it, it was Rick that really, well, he's from Manchester. If he can do it, I can do it. You know, and it, you start making those comparisons, you know, where, well, well, why can't I do it if he's done it? You know, and, and like I say, it, it just gave me the more of the, the buzz for it. And then obviously I was lucky to be promoted by him, doing a bit of training with him um, at times. And obviously spent a lot of time in his company as well, um, obviously because um, his agent, Paul Speed, and you know, you know, I was close friends with him. He did work for me. So I was in and around um, Rick a lot. You know, so I, I seen obviously... What he, what how he train and and stuff like that. So it was, um, I was fortunate to, you know, to be around him and and, and learn from him as well. Did a bit of training with him, um, so it's something that, it's and and saying that actually, I one of my, one of my, breakout performances was on, the undercard of his, um, fight his last fight against Shevchenko, yeah. Cause I stopped uh, Rendell Monroe in six rounds on on that ca on that card, um, so like I said that uh, Rick and boxing and stuff like it was I had some memorable nights. Do you think you'd come back as a in like fifteen twenty years in an exhibition fight? I mean, to be fair, I don't know I, I, in fifteen twenty years I think I'd be I think I'd still be in decent shape. Yeah, you'd still be up for it. Um, I mean, <laughs> look at your smile. I, I, he's like, I, oh. listen, I'd, li I'd like to. I mean, some of these YouTubers now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm available. Um, <laughs> Quig versus Frampton uh, too, maybe at like 50 years old each, something like that. Uh, listen, he's enjoying his life now. Um, so are you. <laughs> I watched you call it because I, I, I was out in Ireland not so long ago. Mm. Oh, I was saying not so long, not so long ago. Um, maybe six months ago, uh, I seen him out in Ireland, um, and. Uh, he, he seems in a good place, you know. And like I say, people used to think, um, obviously, obviously there was needle at the time between us, because obviously we were both coming up at the same time, and um, th that rivalry is what builds, um, you know, builds that sort mm. of fight. Not only that, it made us both very well for that rivalry that we had. It was a good that we was both um, around at the same time. And th like I say, other than... Yo. Danny Flexen here. Think you know shit about boxing? There's only one way to find out. Listen to the full podcast via one of the links in the description or go to secondsoutboxing.podbean.com.
Do you know shit about boxing?